Please welcome Sister Janice as she shares her story. Buenas tardes, good evening. Um, there's an expression that when your heart's desire meets the world's greatest need, there is your bliss. And I think that uh, that has a lot to do with the story of my vocation. I'm a sister of St. Joseph. Um, I blame the part about the passion for speaking Spanish and Latin American culture on my mom because when I was five years old, she entered me into dance class. And this number that we did was called Down South American Way. And she made me this darling costume, satin and ruffles, just like a Chiquita banana, you know? And uh, the whole class of us danced the Down South American Way. And I think that's where my passion or my heart's desire for Spanish and Latino culture began. I took every chance I could all through school to learn more and more Spanish. I just loved how those R's would roll off my tongue or the Ñe. <laughs> Sister, forgive me, she's a native speaker. Um, and uh, so I just, I studied as much of it as I could. The other passion I found that I had was this, these stories about Jesus. Jesus was so amazing and the sisters lived their lives dedicated to him. And they were happy. The sisters, Sister Barbara uh, worked at uh, St. Bernard School in Indiana, Pennsylvania. That's where I met the sisters of St. Joseph. And they would, you know, play tricks on me. <laughs> they would say, we, we, okay, you want to be a sister? We'll give you lists of vocabulary words to learn. <laughs> and one of the first ones you should learn is impetuous because that's what you are. <laughs> and they had me... Well, you know, a good sister would know how to clean a basement, so we'll have you cleaning our basement. <laughs> so they, they really took it. For, so um, the sisters were fun, and they gave their lives to Jesus, who gave his life for us. I, I thought, what, what better thing could there be? So uh, this Spanish and this uh, living your life for God led me to join the Sisters of St. Joseph. And I studied um, Spanish and became, um, you know, a teacher of Spanish. But always in my heart, a desire to actually go where, where this culture was lived and this language was spoken. Equally, and many of you will remember this, there were some very significant events in our lives as Catholics. Vatican II. Well, first of all, Pope uh, John XXIII, wasn't he extraordinary? And then Vatican II. And uh, what happened in Latin America was uh, extraordinary. Because of Vatican II, bishops and catechists began to look at the reality in Latin America and saw that there was a huge difference between those who had, and they had everything, and those who had not. And they were by the thousands who had not, and many times indigenous peoples and uh, vast difference between the rich and the poor. And the bishops realized and met at a place called Medellin in Colombia in 1968. And they realized that, um, you've heard the song, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. And they decided that we must live, the church must live in the midst of this reality, the preferential option for the poor. And, and that is what really you know, uh, inspired my life. The preferential option of the poor that I learned. I learned far more uh, when I went to Latin America. Um, our sisters, Sister Barbara and I were missionaries in um, the Amazon in Brazil. And there we speak Portuguese. And uh, we were there in the Amazon at a time when all of this teaching about base Christian community, about reflecting on the reality, reading the scripture, and learning what is that, what direction is that giving you for, for your life in faith. And the people with whom we worked, our main message was you are dignified in the eyes of God, you are loved, and you deserve to live a life that is sustainable. You deserve to get an adequate price for your jute, for your fish, for your uh, crops, your coffee. You, you should not have to beg 
the um, merchant for what, you know, food for your baby's stomach. So I learned all that in the Amazon and uh, was very grateful for it. Then I came home, back home to the United States and found that I just not, just could not get over this passion in my heart for what I had learned in Latin America and for working directly with the people. So I had the tremendous opportunity to be um, invited to act, volunteer, of course, <laughs> in social service ministry for the Diocese of Pittsburgh with the growing Latino community. And that started in 2003. Pittsburgh had all, always had a substantial number of um, professional Latinos from Peru, um, Colombia, Venezuela, some from Mexico. They worked in the hospitals. They were engineers, researchers, doctors. But suddenly, um, you know, at least now it would be 20 years ago, the laborer class started to come in to the city and to the surroundings. There was a mass in Spanish. They found their way to that mass in Spanish. And then they began asking the padre, can you please help me? My wife is pregnant. I don't know where to get, go to get her care. Or my children are in school and I don't know how to talk to the teacher. Or, you know, where can I find enough food for my family or a place to live? So um, the padre soon became overwhelmed with all these requests and um, that's when I had the opportunity to start working with this population since 2003. I have learned from this experience, from these beautiful people, what it is to live in this country as an undocumented immigrant. An immigrant who crosses the southern border without inspection, without uh, visa papers, giving them permission to be here. And there are push factors and pull factors of why they come. And most of it has to do with poverty. No options for your family, no options for your children to have school or health care in your home country. And more so now, tremendous violence from gangs um, and uh, risk for your life. So I understand. I understand why they come. I do uh, wish that we could come up with some kind of a miracle that could help improve conditions in their home countries, but for right now, the way the world is, we have these folks among us. And I am so grateful to God and the Sisters of St. Joseph that I and the wonderful staff that I work with, our agency is called Casa San Jose, that we are able to walk alongside these folks, accompany them, and provide whatever we can for the moment for them to feel welcome and them to feel loved. And uh, the story that I will end with is the story of Martin Esquivel. His story has become very uh, public. It's been in the press a lot. He was a, a real com um, active community member in our Latino community. He took part in actually leading focus groups for our Latino needs assessment. He organized other Latino people whose children went to Arsenal grade school. Uh, where there is a English as a second language component. Um, he brought his kids to catechism at uh, our church where we have mass in Spanish, very involved. And here he was uh, driving a vehicle um, that had, I believe, expired plates. And the police picked, stopped him for that, of course, but then they called immigration. And he was taken on May 2nd of this past year and he uh, just recently was deported. We walked the walk with him and his family. He has three beautiful kids and his wife here in Pittsburgh, and we walked the walk with them. We went to the um, district attorney, begged that there be clemency for him because he was such an active member and such a good man, but um, they kept to the rules. The federal attorney kept to the rules. Immigration kept to the rules, and that man was deported. But right now, we find ourselves at a place in this country where many, many poor, no, more people face that risk. And so um, I'm grateful for this opportunity to tell my story. I'm grateful that God uh, has given me the gift of doing what my heart's desire is. Um, I ask you to be well informed of the issues 
and um, do whatever you can to um, reach out to welcome immigrants and refugees among us. And I think our country will be the more vibrant for it. Thank you.